House will come to order. Members, please take your seats. Sergeant Arms. The House is now in session. All persons not entitled to privilege on the floor, please retire to the gallery. The members will rise and be led in prayer by the Reverend Isaac Collins, lead pastor, Wesley Memorial United Methodist Church, Charlottesville, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, which will be led by the delegate from Shenandoah, Delegate Gilbert. Good afternoon. It's my privilege to be pastor at Wesley Memorial, where Maria Chavalan Sut, an indigenous woman from Guatemala, lives in sanctuary. Maria is seeking asylum in the United States, but ICE has violated her due process in an attempt to deport her. Her story is shared by thousands of undocumented people in the state of Virginia, and I want their voices to be heard in this hall of power today. I asked Maria if she would write my prayer, and these are her words. May we take them all to heart. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the people in Virginia who have interceded in my sanctuary case. My God, you did not send me into this beautiful world with an uncomfortable ankle monitor. You did not send me into this world with an order of deportation. But in the midst of my story, you have given me a message. God loves us. May God bless the 2019 sessions of the General Assembly. May God bless the work of those in authority so that all people may be able to provide for their families and live a dignified life. Amen. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The members will answer the roll call by indicating their presence on the electronic voting board. Clark will close the roll. Mr. Speaker, a quorum is present. Pursuant to House Rule 3, I have examined and approved the Journal of the House of Delegates for January 9th, 2019. Motions and resolutions under Rule 39, pursuant to the provisions of Rule 40, are now in order. The clerk shall announce the first morning hour of business, including any clerk's announcements and communications. Mr. Speaker, here in the first morning hour, I have several reminders and announcements. Uh, first and foremost, all requests for drafts, redrafts, and corrections to legislation to be introduced by next Friday, January 18th, introduction deadline. They are due to uh, the Division of Legislative Services by 5 tomorrow. Uh, so all your requests uh, for any redrafts drafts or corrections need to be to DLS by 5 tomorrow. Also, by uh, 5 o'clock tomorrow, all budget amendments are due to the appropriations staff. If you have any budget amendments, please then get them to the appropriations by 5 tomorrow. Um, this is a change in process as well, um, looking forward. The Speaker asked me to inform members that the designated day of the week for considering and block commending resolutions and memorial resolutions has been changed from Fridays to Mondays, simply changing the day from Friday to Monday. The first block consideration of introduced commending and memorial resolutions will be this coming Monday, January 14th. It's our hope that by moving this procedure from Fridays to Mondays will help expedite the work because the Senate takes theirs up on Thursday. We'll be able to grab whatever they communicate over to us and put that on with ours on Mondays and keep uh, the process moving. Uh, finally, uh, several members have uh, reached out to the front desk and me um, that members may have incorrect information being reflected on their chief patron page on LIS relative to the introduction totals and if the legislation was pre-filed or not. Uh, Journal and record staff here in the House Clerk's Office up front is aware in the process of comparing our records with LIS and will be coordinating in the information corrected to accurately reflect our records, since it's our responsibility. This information will be updated by close of business tomorrow. So if there's an issue involving your introduction limit totals, you will receive notification from us 
um, uh, shortly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that completes the announcements I have. The delegate from Scott, Delegate Kilgore. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have a, an announcement and an introduction. Delegate has the floor. Uh, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, the uh, House Commerce and Labor Committee will meet at 1.45 today instead of immediately upon uh, adjournment to accommodate some individuals' schedules. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I do have an uh, uh, introduction. We've got a great group of uh, students up in the gallery today. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the uh, Virginia Career and Technical Organization uh, is in the gallery today and they're visiting. We've got some very impressive uh, young students who hold some state and national officers and I, uh, offices, and I would like to uh, make an introduction of those individuals. First, we have uh, Charles uh, Pritz, who is the De uh, DECA state president, and he's with the Fairfax uh, County Public Schools. We got uh, Haley Patel, the FBLA state president with Bristol uh, Public Schools. Uh, Mara Mullins, who is the FCCLA state president, and she's uh, Scott County Public Schools. Uh, we have uh, Kennedy Strickler, who is the FCCLA national president, and uh, Mr. Majority Leader, she's from the Shenandoah uh, County Public Schools. We have uh, Katie Rusa, who is the HOSA state president, Martinsville uh, uh, City Public Schools. We have uh, Parvi Das, who is a Skills USA state president from Loudoun County uh, Public Schools. And uh, Kaylee Corbin, Skills USA national vice president, Pulaski County Public Schools. Devon Patel, TSA state president, Henrico County Public Schools. And Bailey Watson, FFA chapter president with County uh, Public Schools. So these individuals represent the thousands of students, Mr. Speaker, who are enrolled in career and technical education programs uh, across the uh, Commonwealth. These CE, CTE programs uh, uh, cover curriculum encompassing agriculture, business, education, marketing, health science, technology, and the service industry. Uh, these uh, programs uh, help us uh, to achieve uh, productive work workforce readiness uh, uh, skills and behaviors, and uh, we're just so pleased to have these uh, future leaders with us today. So I hope that you'll join with me in welcoming uh, these future leaders uh, today. Thank you. All. The House would certainly like to welcome the CTE students and especially some of you that have taken on both national and state offices. It's probably not anything more important than CTE. So thanks for coming. I hope you enjoy your stay at the Capitol. Delegate from Charlottesville, Delegate Toscano. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for an introduction. Delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, joining us today to give the prayer was the Reverend Isaac. Collins, who's the lead pastor at Wesley Memorial Church, United Memor Methodist Church in Charlottesville. He's been in that job just six months, and uh, of course, he's going to witness the University of Virginia's basketball team win the national championship this year. Thank you. Uh, Wesley Memorial uh, has been in operation in Charlottesville for over 60 years and ministers to many people in that area, including the University of Virginia community. Uh, Reverend Collins has a Bachelor of Music uh, from University of Tennessee and then attended seminary at Duke. He decided to move up the ACC hierarchy by coming to Charlottesville and being with us. Wesley Memorial is a very active uh, congregation in Charlottesville, and it actually is the home of the, one of the uh, longest running cooperative preschool programs in the entire state, the Molly Mickey Cooperative Preschool, which is actually twice as old as uh, Pastor uh, Collins. So I hope that the House will join me in thanking Pastor Collins uh, for giving today's invocation and welcoming him to the uh, Capitol. The delegate from Richmond City, Delegate Adams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
I rise for the purpose of an introduction. The delegate has the floor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members of the House, I'd like to welcome the liberal women of Chesterfield County and beyond. This group originated in Chesterfield and has members across the Richmond area and the Commonwealth. Their organization helps educate citizens on our local and state government, as well as how to advocate for their communities. In the last year, their members have provided countless volunteer hours for schools, food banks, candidates, and nonprofit organizations. They look forward to working with all legislators to make Virginia a state that each citizen can be proud of. I would also appreciate us extending peace and healing to their founder, Kim Drew Wright, recovering from a serious life challenge as we as each of you join me in giving the liberal women of Chesterfield County a warm house welcome. The House would like to welcome the liberal women of Chesterfield to the Capitol and hope you enjoy your stay. The delegate from Newport News, Delegate Price. Mr. Speaker, I rise for an introduction. The delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Joining us in the gallery today, we have some amazing students from Heritage High School in Newport News. These students are participating in the STARS program, which stands for Student Trial Advocates Reaching for Success. The students are practicing for a mock trial that will be held in May. Local attorneys and judges are serving as mentors to help them uh, prepare at, for the process and learn important aspects of their cases. Through the STARS program, the students are developing professionalism, gaining exposure to careers in law and advocacy, equipping themselves with the resilience and perseverance to overcome challenges they are experiencing, and uh, empowering themselves to see that they can be the change in their community. I want to thank all of the adults working hard to make this experience possible, including the Newport News Commonwealth Attorney's Office, Heritage High School, the Building Better Futures Program, and the judges and lawyers that will be investing their time. On behalf of the entire Newport News delegation, as we commend them for their active participation in such a worthy program, and we wish them well in their endeavors, I hope my colleagues would join me in giving them a warm house welcome. The House would certainly like to welcome the STAR student and all the great work they're doing with uh, mock trials and the legal profession, so please welcome to the Capitol. The delegate from Suffolk, Delegate Brewer. Mr. Speaker, I rise for an introduction. Delegate has four. Um, in the gallery, and I believe in throughout the building today, we have the Virginia Federation of Republican Women, who are our community leaders, who are some of our very dear friends who have spent countless hours helping us in every possible capacity in the backbone of our communities. I would hope uh, that the House could give the Virginia Federation of Republican Women a warm welcome to the Capitol. The House would certainly like to welcome the women from VFRW and uh, hope you enjoy your stay at the Capitol. The delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Hugo. Mr. Speaker, I rise today for a motion. Delegate has the floor. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise today to ask that at the end of this session we adjourn in honor of the son of one of ours who passed recently. I think many days we get we get wound up about the politics and the issue of the day. And sometimes I think we forget that uh, life is as important and life is also brief. Uh, recently, on uh, January 6, uh, Rich Anderson's son, oldest and only son, passed away unexpectedly, an asthma attack. And like Zen, young man, cut in the life, prime of his life. Again, sometimes we get wrapped on issues but there are issues more important in politics. And I hope today that we would all agree that we could come together and think about one of our own, recent own, who's lost somebody unexpectedly. So I'd ask today that we adjourn at the end of this session in honor of Scott Anderson. Doug at a Hugo moves that when the House adjourn today, it adjourn in the honor and memory of Scott Anderson.
Those in favor of that motion shall rise. Pursuant to House Rule 30, the journal shall reflect that the following members are away on pressing personal business and are granted leave from today's session. Delegate McQuinn. The clerk shall announce the next order of business. Mr. Speaker, the second morning hour order of business is moves of legislation uh, that is not applicable uh, given today's calendar. The clerk shall announce the next order of business. Uh, the third morning hour order of businesses are taking a legislation is taking legislation by for the day, and again, that is not applicable to today's calendar. The clerk shall announce the next order of business. Uh, the fourth uh, morning hour order of business uh, is member requests for points of personal privilege. Again, the speaker requests members to use the request to speak buttons to signify their desire at this time to be recognized. The delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Watts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to uh, add to your very momentous remarks in opening our 400th session. One thing that struck me when we celebrated the 400th anniversary of the landing at Jamestown, and as we visited the sites and heard uh, amazing tales, those who landed faced many perils, significant death. Uh, and so the fact that after just 12 years, there were eight villages that had been established, despite all that they had gone through, and that those eight villages, as they looked at what they would do, were, uh, in fact, the basis of our first General Assembly. And as the speaker then, and I still have this on my website and will keep it always on my website because I think his message was so great. He basically said, and convening that first General Assembly, Speaker John Pori observed, peace is best preserved by giving information to the people. In other words, they could have continued with martial law type of edicts from the top of leadership, but our first speaker said, and I do want to repeat it, peace is best preserved by giving information to the people. Uh, again, I am proud to be a, a part of this body. Delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Fullercorn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, members of the body, I am humbled and honored to rise today on this floor as leader of the Democratic Caucus. And I'm so grateful for, thank you, the men and women, thank you, for the men and women who have faith in me and have entrusted me with this tremendous responsibility. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your very kind words yesterday. I appreciate it. I would be remiss if I didn't mention our friend, the delegate from Charlottesville, David Toscano. My Democratic colleagues and I are so tremendously grateful for the way he has ably led our caucus for the past seven years. As our leader emeritus, Mr. Speaker, I know he will continue to serve our caucus, his constituents, and the Commonwealth with distinction as we move forward in the years ahead. I would also like to congratulate another member of our caucus colleague and friend, Delegate Jennifer Boisco, on the election to that other body down the hall. We know that she will represent her constituents well and to continue to do great things for Virginia. Just under nine years ago, Mr. Speaker, I entered this beautiful chamber for the first time, and I remember looking around in awe. I was fortunate to win a special election during the 2010 session, and I had the honor of being sworn in literally right here on the floor, uh, with only 10 days left of the session, actually. Immediately, I was overwhelmed and in awe of the building, the beauty, the body, and all those who came before me. I felt the responsibility that each of us is entrusted in serving 
the, our constituents, and really the Commonwealth as a whole. One of the lessons I learned on my very first day here, and in future years, was the importance of civility. Compromise, and Mr. Speaker, also working across the line in the aisle. I'm looking forward to working together, Mr. Speaker, and with the delegate from Shenandoah and your caucus to govern in the best traditions of the Commonwealth, in the spirit of cooperation, collaboration, and the, that our constituents truly expect and demand of us. And when we do come together, Mr. Speaker, I, I know for sure that great things happen for Virginians. Like in 2013, Mr. Speaker and members, when we passed the historic transportation bill, and just last year, members of this body, in 2018, when we were able to pass Medicaid expansion, providing health insurance for 400,000 Virginians. I am confident that we can do even more in 2019 if we work at it. Mr. Speaker, speaking of bipartisanship, last night we heard from our governor, Ralph Northam. He laid out his vision to build on our success in order to provide every Virginian a chance to live a successful, healthy, and also safe life. Governor Northam reminded us that coming into 2019, our Commonwealth is in a very strong position. Our economy is thriving. We are attracting new jobs and businesses, as we heard and we know, like Amazon. We passed Medicaid expansion, as we've mentioned several times, because we're so proud of that, which will also boost state revenue and provide hundreds of thousands of Virginians, again, with insurance. And the governor challenged us. He said, if we want Virginia to be the best place to live and work and raise a family, we need to come together. We need to work together and grasp this opportunity to grasp this opportunity in order to hire more school counselors and increase our teachers' pay, to make our tax, care fair, our tax code fairer for all Virginians, to reduce gun violence and to save lives, to protect our environment, to reform our criminal justice system, and to remove barriers to voting. And we heard the governor say loud and clear, now is the time to support gender equality by passing the Equal Rights Amendment. House, <laughs> House Democrats applaud Governor Northam for his leadership, his, for his leadership to build on the progress that we have already made and to build upon that to take Virginia to the very next level. The governor is right. This is not Washington. We here in Richmond do the people's work, representing our constituents every single day, and we are ready to join together in a bipartisan manner to do great things for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The clerk will call the calendar. Calendar for today, Thursday, January 10th, 2019. Calendar Virginia House delegates, there are no live categories today on the calendar. Mr. Speaker, that completes today's calendar. Per House Rule 51, the House's return of the morning hour. Does the clerk have any additional announcements or communications? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Speaker. Looking ahead to this afternoon, as the Chairman of Commerce and Labor uh, announced, they will meet. Um, at 1.45 today. That's a change in time. So Commerce and Labor will meet at 1.45 in the House Committee Room down in Pocahontas. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, General Laws, uh, the Committee on General Laws will not be meeting this afternoon. Uh, neither will its subcommittee number two. However, in lieu of that, they're going to have other subcommittees of general laws, the first of which will be, uh, again, about an hour uh, from adjournment, so roughly 1.30, 1.45, somewhere in that realm. The first subcommittee will be subcommittee number one, uh, chaired by uh, Delegate Fowler. That will be the first uh, subcommittee. That's a change in time. Then they're going to stack several others. So subcommittee uh, one will meet of general laws once they're finished. Then subcommittee number three will meet. Um, they will take up several bills. And then finally, um, uh, subcommittee four uh, will meet. And all of those will take place in House Room 3 um, in the extension, general laws one, three, and four. Um, then, Mr. Speaker, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, um, uh, the Appropriations Comp and Retirement Subcommittee. 
uh, they will be meeting in uh, subcommittee room 300A on the third floor, a probes, comp, and retirement sub at 3 o'clock on the third floor uh, subcommittee room A. Um, at 4 o'clock, uh, Appropriations uh, Public Safety Subcommittee will be meeting. Uh, they'll be meeting at 4 o'clock in 300A Subcommittee uh, in the Pocahontas Building. At 4 o'clock as well, uh, Transportation Subcommittee will be meeting. Uh, that'll be in the fourth floor, on the fourth floor in uh, Subcommittee Room 400A for Transportation Sub. Um, at 4 o'clock, and finally, the last uh, piece of business for the afternoon, at 6 o'clock tonight, the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus will be uh, meeting uh, in 300B subcommittee room. Looking ahead to tomorrow, the first meeting um, looks like will be uh, county cities and towns. Uh, they will be meeting at 8.30 in the shared committee room. It's a change in time for CC&T tomorrow morning at 8.30. Then at 9 o'clock, uh, Committee on Militia, Police, and Public Safety will be meeting. They'll be in the committee room, House Committee Room in Pocahontas. Uh, Privileges and Elections Committee meeting tomorrow is canceled. So just two full committee meetings tomorrow morning. Mr. Speaker, that completes announcements that I have. Mr. Speaker. Delegate from Franklin, Delegate Poindexter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, announcement, please. Delegate has the floor. Regarding the 3 p.m. compensation retirement meeting, um, we're having some difficulty deciding between third floor and fourth floor. So those on the uh, CNR subcommittee, check the third floor and fourth floor and see if they have the right one determined by then. Thank you. Delegate from Shenandoah, Delegate Gilbert. Mr. Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns to reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. The delegate from Shenandoah, Delegate Gilbert, moves, and when the House adjourned today, it adjourned to reconvene tomorrow at 10 a.m. As many as favor that motion would say aye. Those opposed, no. The motion's agreed to. The gentleman from Shenandoah. Mr. Speaker, I move the House to now adjourn. The delegate from Shenandoah, Delegate Gilbert, moves that the House to now adjourn. As many as favor that motion will say aye. Those opposed, no. The motion's agreed to. The House stands adjourned until tomorrow at 10 a.m.